this is Bishop Andy C. Luter of the Hollywood Full Gospel Baptist Cathedral, and I'd like to welcome you to our three-minute Bible study for this particular week. This particular week, our story, or our Bible lesson, is entitled, Ezra, a priest for the people. I know you're started, so I'm going to give you a quick minute to get a pen and pad, and we'll begin. Well, as we begin today, I want to begin here. I want to share with you my learning objective or exactly what it is that I'm trying to share with you today. By the end of this lesson, I'm hoping that the following items will occur. Number one, to discuss the prayer Ezra offered and state why it was offered to feel enslaved if they have unconfessed sin in their lives. And then finally, repent and offer prayers of confession for unfaithfulness or more specifically a prayer for salvation. Now, as we begin to look at the lesson of this week, I want to share with you three particular words. That all of them come out of the Hebrew. Uh, they're found in the book of Ezra in the ninth chapter. The first of those three words is the word desolation. It comes from the Hebrew. It is found in chapter nine, verse nine. The Hebrew word here is korba, korba. And it literally means places that have decayed or been Good destroyed word. is abomination found in verse one. Again, the Hebrew word is to'iba. It literally means something that is morally disgusting, more specifically in the context of idols. The final word is the word stan. It is pronounced in the Hebrew as amad. It is found in verse 15, and it literally means to endure, dwell, or to abide. Now, let's take a quick look at the scriptures themselves. As always, I always try and give you a King James reading of the text, and then I come behind that with a New Living Translation because it's a bit more of a contemporary translation, and in my estimation, it provides greater comprehension on the text itself. Let's begin here with the King James Version, and I am reading again in the book of Ezra, the ninth chapter, here the ninth verse and the 15th verse. Here's the following. For we were bondsmen yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up in the house of our God, and to repair the desolation thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Now, let me take you to verse 15 of that very same chapter 9 of the book of Ezra. Verse 15 reads... O Lord God of Israel, thou art the righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because. Now, I'd like to shift from the King James Version now over to the New Living Translation. Again, we're reading from the book of Ezra, ninth chapter. I want to begin here in the 15th verse, New Living Translation. For we were slaves, but in this unfailing love, our God did not abandon us in our slavery. Instead, he caused the kings of Persia to treat us favorably. He revived us so we could rebuild the temple of our God and repair his ruin. He has given us protection, wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 15, O Lord, our God of Israel, you are just. We come before you in our guilt as nothing but an escaped remnant, though in such a condition, none of us can stand, there's that word, in your presence. Now, I want you, when you have an opportunity, to go back through that scripture, read it over again, and find the key words, the vocabulary words, that I have shared with you in this particular lesson. Okay, I want to take a quick minute to talk about people, places, and things. I want to begin here with a discussion on the scribes. Consider the following. Scribes, the Hebrew word so far comes from a root meaning count. This word is translated also as secretary. The term implies one who has learning later. The word would also include a public instructor or one who is educated in 
the law. Very now, what interesting is very thing. interesting is that scribes were those persons who were responsible for copying the word of God. Initially, they were priests, but as more and more emphasis was placed upon every Jewish person knowing the law for themselves, the ability to be a scribe was expanded to other individuals. Now, in terms of background, we are dealing with the Babylonian captivity. I want you to consider the following. Uh, throughout the scriptures, we find that God continues to remind his people that if they're not in right relationship, he will allow them to be overcome. Yet, he promises to restore them. Now, one of those restorations come here where God delivers his people and allows Zerubbabel, a prince, to lead them, some 50,000, back from Babylon after the Persians had conquered the Babylonians back to their homeland of Israel. Well, friends, I want to take these final 30, 45 seconds to share with you three quick observations. The first of those is these. Number one, Ezra acknowledges Judah's sinful past. And we find that in Ezra, the ninth chapter, the fifth through the seventh verse. Ezra's immediate response to the news of intermarriage with pagan worships is profound astonishment and grief. He rips his clothes and tears his hair as an indication of his grief over this. This was an outward expression of which he was feeling. Now, the second item that I want to share with you is that Ezra acknowledges the redeeming grace and even the mercy of God. Consider the following slide. Ezra's reference to a little reviving in our bondage, and that is found in verse 8 of chapter 9 in the book of Ezra, is a reminder of God's tender mercy toward Judah. Although they were still subjects of Babylon, God had given them the liberty of dwelling in their own land. Ezra prayer acknowledged that it was God's mercy that brought them from their conquerors. In his prayer, Ezra questions God. But he is restored in his faith when God assures him that God has not yet abandoned him. I want to close with this final observation, and that is, like Ezra, he is dealing with and wrestling with how to bring back into right relationship a people who have been disconnected from their God over a period of 70 years. In like fashion, part of task part of our assignment is reconnecting people and encouraging them to seek God in all their ways. Listen, this is Bishop Andy C. Luda with this week's three-minute Bible study. Thank you for taking time to share with us. We love you, God loves you, and we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.